imposing gloves here. And today we are going to be talking about a critical listening series idea of odd versus even harmonics. It's very valuable for getting your head wrapped around how a complex signal can work. And also when you're choosing sound design and when you're listening, there are going to be tall tail signs, not tall tail. Anyways, they're going to be giveaway signs that say, oh, that started as a saw wave or that started as a square wave. And so it's important to look at this because it's very useful when trying to dissect a sound in your head. Also, I'm wearing a hat today. So let's talk about this. Now, what's crazy is here is a saw wave. And I expect you to know basics between saw and square waves from my sound and synth basic series. So if I play, there's our saw wave, just listen to it. So that sounds, you know, pretty regular. It's got, you know, the harmonic saw wave series, la la la. If we come up here, over here, that sounds, and of course, all odd harmonics. And that sounds really different, like super different. You might be saying, what's the big deal here? And types of just, well, I'll talk about distortion in a second. The big deal is this, this is a big deal because that's super, super different. Like you might be saying, well, you're taking away half the harmonics. Yeah, but they're in the same series. It's pretty incredible that it can sound so different. Why does it sound like that? Well, the answer lies in basic tuning theory. Now I'm, gonna get, I'm not gonna get into it. You can look it up online. There's lots of uh, people who work the math out on this, but I'm just gonna give you the general aspect. So I'm gonna play a note here. I will play this. Play that note. So these first few harmonics are loud. They are much louder than the upper harmonics in the saw wave series. Um, and that's what causes you to perceive it as a saw wave that's covered in the sound and synth basics. You understand that these harmonics are softer. So these first ones have an incredible bearing on the sound. And the harmonic relationship these bear to each other is what gives it that natural bearing. So if you do, so to the distortion thing, the certain types of distortion will specifically focus on odd harmonics versus even harmonics. In contact, there's a module that specifically, that's its job, is it messes with odd ordered harmonics. And so, and guitar, there's different types of methods about getting the sound with a transistor versus a tube. Uh, amplifier and overdriving it but you can achieve similar sounds and that's like that's like a whole nother topic it's not really related to this but it is kind of so let's talk about uh why this is the harmonics the math side that i said i wasn't going to work out so here we have our fundamental let's just make the math easy for now let's say that our fundamental in the saw wave series so every harmonic and let's say that that is you know 100 hertz and so let's open up a some way to write this down. So we'll open up a notebook. So we've got 100 hertz, right? The next harmonic will be the fundamental times two, right? So that's going to be 200 hertz. So that is an even harmonic. In fact, I'll put it on this side so it's all lined up. So we have an E. That's two harmonics. This is an odd harmonic. It's the third one. So that's going to be 300 hertz. And you can see where I'm going here. You know what? For odd, we're going to put D because E. So we got E. That's 400. And then we got D, that's 500. And then we got 600. Whoa, I got that wrong. Even, odd, yeah, even. I put a D and for some reason I thought even. And then we have 600 and so on and so forth, 700, la, la, la. We don't really need to worry as we get up because in both series, the... Uh, amplitude drops pretty fast and so these harmonics do have a bearing like a very important bearing because they form a relationship and as we talked about earlier your brain is really good at picking these relationships out but it's not mega important for this principle so here 100 to 200 we note that that is an octave so we'll put oct next to it uh, a third so we have 300 so there's 300 hertz value in difference um, that is I believe from now, remember you have the linear scale here. So if I open up my parametric EQ, see people have worked this out. I used to have it memorized, but I have the general idea and I don't pull it out enough to remember it completely right now. These are like little details. So 100's here, but to jump up an extra 200 Hertz puts you in an entirely next octave. I believe it's actually an octave plus a fifth. So octave plus a fifth. I might be wrong, but I think, believe it's something like that. And then 400 hertz, which is double 200. So that's another octave up. So we have another octave. And then from here, things start getting funny. They do not, uh, they do not start playing nice. And 
Uh, now here we have an even split. So this is harmonically viable too. this 600 as we get to the the 700 is again funny So the uh, very early in the series we quickly see that the even ordered harmonics are replicating the original note And so when you have even order harmonics as a distortion, it's gonna sound a lot more natural odd ordered harmonics are gonna emphasize Harmonics at first it's kind of nice, but it gets pretty funny pretty fast and as a result it's very, very audible because it, it breaks a tuning scheme as well. So the saw wave series that includes all these harmonics. Now this applies in all sounds. And that, now let's let's bring it in. We're gonna look at square wave and saw wave one more time, and then let's bring it into a much more full context of what's going on here because it can get pretty darn complicated. So first, uh, let's play the the saw wave. <laughs> And so here's our saw wave and you can just hear it. it sounds natural and then as we move it you can actually hear that almost the tuning seems to change too so you can hear like the harmonics as they get back get added back in that they really they reinforce a tuning scheme that we already are sort of hardwired to hear by the fact that it's also reproducing those notes when those lower notes aren't reproduced it, it makes a big impact on the way the sound you know sounds so Let's talk about, obviously, unless you're doing sound design, and there, there's a lot of ways from here, you can do a huge number of things by using distortion modules and things to dynamically influence the the overtone structure as we move. That's like a sound design course, so we're looking at critical listening, and a lot of that stuff will become more apparent as we get into distortion profiles and other things like that. So what we need to look at instead is we need to look at... Uh, there's the overtone series and then there is the oh, yeah full full spectrum. That's what we're talking about right now I had no idea why I just forgot that I was reading about amnesia did, the other day about a guy his name's Clive He's a real guy. You can look him up. He can't remember within like when he first got amnesia within like Three or four seconds like I think, I think it might have gone up to like maybe a minute as it got older It got a little bit better um, but yeah, that's insane for getting that much. Anyways, let's talk about more complex stuff. Like, let's say that you've got a, you know, a kick drum and you are distorting it. Well, it's important to note that when you're distorting, you can only distort content that's already there. Now, if you're not familiar with Harmer and the way Harmer works, each one of these spots right here represents a harmonic and it's re-synthesized this. This is actual synthesis. This is not sample data. This is synthesis. So as I play it you can hear it being played and you can see the harmonics moving around down here. Now, this is like one note. Let's pick something with like a real series. Let's go to the samples in the machine library and, oh, let's go to instrument, lead, whatever. Oh, that sounds nice. So you can see there's a harmonic series going on here, a very obvious one. Um, they sound like brass, it's brass, so it's gonna be this, the saw wave series. You can see there's sort of a phasery thing going on too at the beginning of the attack. So what is what is the deal with more complex signal? Now in a full mix, you're gonna have things that go on and off. So each one of these little lines, you can see that this individual harmonic turns on and then it turns off a little bit right here and then it turns on a little bit, off a little bit, off a, on and then off and then on. So it's, it can reproduce this as we go. Harmer's a whole, is just a friggin' masterpiece. Like it's amazing. So I encourage you to go check out my series on it. It's really cool. But you can see the that these things are moving all over. So if we were to distort it and emphasize odd ordered harmonics, you'd kind of shift the tuning of the original sample, which is one of the takeaways from this. The other takeaway is in a dynamic mix, you have things of very different colors and timbres going out. So whatever you throw to change all of that is really gonna affect your sound, especially if things like, I'm not sure if we have any bell sounds, but we can make our own bell sounds. So from here, we could do a number of sound design things. So let's say that we've got, we wanna make a bell sound. And I'm not going to explain all the sound design I'm, I'm about to do because it would it would just be too much work. And I'm not too much work, but like way too much to explain in one video. And we are going to add some. And so right now we've got a saw wave series. And I happen to know that if you, you can get a bell sound out of this pretty easy. My release is a little long. And we will turn the reverb. We don't need that. So it's a pretty convincing bell. And now as we mess with the harmonics, we're gonna be taking advantage of that thing. But as we, we could also shift the filter off or make it wider. 
and introduce series and mess with that series. And so as you listen, this is sort of more advanced listening now, you can listen for the sound design. You can say, hey, is that a saw wave or a square wave? Now that starts with a saw wave as a bass. So it influences that. Now this prism knob actually shifts things from where they were. So these are actually considered overtones because they're not related as a ratio to the fundamental. We talked about that in the, well, I talked about this in the Harmer course as well as the sound and synth basics. But if we go to a square wave, so it sounds like you can hear it change quite dramatically, like hugely dramatically. So that's the, that's the saw wave. So you can hear emphasis. Now that acts actually more dramatic. I mean, less dramatic than I thought. I can, I can hear it pretty clearly though on the, on the upper end. But if I were to open up the spectrum a bit, there it's a lot more dramatic. So it's a really, really cool thing. Very, very cool sort of ways to do synthesis and listen for things. But in, in the context as a listener, you should listen for these things. They are very, very cool, very useful. Uh, the si the saw wave and the square, the square wave and the saw wave. And now, of course, that's the basic reason though, it's the tuning and stuff. So if you have things that are opening and closing with filters and stuff, like say brass instruments that use mutes will take advantage of things like this. And then like, for example, guitars who run into distortion effects will manipulate timbre like this. And it's just, it's just a function of what you perceive as harmony. But this is sort of like music theory, only tiny, because all the same ratios apply in here. You can create harmonically pleasing things and you're taking advantage of the fact that we pretty much perceive chords as notes and notes clumped together as chords and it's like this weird thing that fits inside of itself if you have any questions let me know support me on patreon because you are a super cool person let me know how this affects your listening if you've never been aware of this before this may be pretty mind-blowing to you if you're aware of this this may just be something that is just a little more informative good thing to cover the basics you know uh, if you have any questions drop them down below subscribe and have a blessed day way too much oomph for a beginner for very very first beginning sound designer. So this is a great place to start. You are going to get out of this series uh, a whole bunch of techniques. You're going to learn what all the buttons and knobs do and stuff like that. But the goal is to show you the application of these buttons and knobs, not necessarily a sound design with. That's the second series that will follow this one day. Maybe not.